Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Moshe Lewis. Welcome to Music and Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Moshe Lewis. I'm so excited to be joined by Leon Silvers IV, and he's a singer, songwriter, producer. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's a blessing. Yeah. It is amazing. Your background goes back to the age of seven, if I'm not mistaken, that you started writing music at the age of seven. You yeah. got to tell us about that. That is not common. Yeah, yeah, I, I was blessed. You know, my, my dad is Leon Silvers III, okay. um, you know, legendary writer, musician, uh, producer. Yes. Um, and so I just naturally was around the studio a lot. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, at one point he had a song that Teddy Riley um, gave him to write. Right. And uh, I just loved the beat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I was humming something in the corner. Right. And out of nowhere, he was like, uh, son, what, you got a melody? Right. So I sang it to him. I had the words and everything, and pretty much he he snuck it in like right in the last minute <laughs> while um, the artist Men of Vision sure. they were signed to MJ's label. Right. Um, it was like one of the last songs that made it through. Mm. And when it was credit time, he Teddy asked him, you know, sure. okay, so who, who's the writers on this song? And that's when my name came up, and he was like, wait, your son? Right. So. Yeah, it was, it was a great uh, opportunity and uh, I've always just been around music, so. Sure, absolutely. That was, that's the story of that. Yeah. yeah, but I wanted to tease that out a little bit because not too many people get to have that kind of scenario and I know uh, a little bit about Teddy. So what was it like sort of working with him in that whole process of even getting a song onto a label? How much stuff did they look at? How much stuff did yeah. they think about? It's a, it's a long process. Um, sometimes songs that you worked on uh, don't even, you know, make it to the album. Right. And, you know, and you don't find it out till years later. So, oh, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a um, yeah, steady grind. You got to keep working and just, you know, you never know when your opportunity will come again. So, right. you know, just keep working hard, you know. Absolutely. And if I understand correctly, you've worked with other groups, obviously Teddy, but Gladys Knight and, and others as well. Um, just tell us about some of the stories that kind of maybe one that was really an amazing experience for you. Well, yeah, it was uh, actually Gladys Knight, uh, one of the legends. Um, she <clears throat> she had an uh, uh, album that was coming out around 2011, and um, she hired my dad to do a few songs. and. Um, I, again, I was just in the right place at the right time, sure. and I was working on music and uh, came, played a few ideas for her. She chose one and um, sang an older uh, song called uh, I Who Have Nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, she did a uh, remake of that song on my new track, mm -hmm. so it kind of made a cool fusion. And yeah. uh, In the studio, I was just kind of chilling back, just let my dad, you know, uh, this, it was his gig. Right. I just provided the music and, yeah. you know, but at, at, at some point uh, my dad kind of turned to me and said, oh yeah, I thought you had some ideas. You just kind of put me on the spot. <laughs> right. I was like, Pretty oh, cool uh, so I couldn't just say, no, I didn't. Right. So I, I kind of gave uh, Gladys kind of an ad lib to sing and she was like, oh, okay, I like that. And right. she put it down and um, that was kind of, you know, kind of help my confidence a little bit. Right, to say the least, to say the least. Yeah, yeah. So I want to tease this concept out because it's something people could take for granted. I think young people could go one of two directions. Hey, that's my dad, he does his thing, I don't want any part of it, I don't want to be in the business, I see whatever negative sides or positive sides, but right. I'm gonna do my own thing, or I can, I'm 100% in. How did you sort of navigate that and, and make the decision that, hey, me and dad can be cool and, and I can work, as you were saying, sort of alongside him and still keep my peace? Right, um, just not having an ego, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Just knowing my place and uh, <laughs> just re realizing that um, I, I need to take notes, you right. know? Um, and that just kind of keeps me grounded and, and understanding um, when to assert myself and, and right. not, you know, so. Obviously. It's kind of helpful. It's clear you look up to him. What are some of the things that you admire? What are some of those qualities? And it can be on the musician side or not that you really feel like, gosh, I'm, I'm really, I am learning some key things from him about the business and just being a really good producer. Um, watching the, the album uh, that Nicole just put out mm -hmm. uh, with my dad, just watching that process and um, the, uh, the detail to mm -hmm. every song and just being around, a fly on the wall. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm still, yeah, I'm still learning from my pops, and right. um, this was definitely another learning experience, just being kind of close in it this time and featured on a song. Right. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a great great time to. Sure. So let's see. talk about that. So this time you're singing, and you're working with Nicole, who we're going to talk to a little bit later, and um, we can make it if we could try. How did that all come together? That you guys would actually work together on that song. Yeah, um, that song was actually kind of, it was pre-written, mm -hmm. um, and obviously it was a remake, right. another remake, exactly. um, but once she heard where the idea of where it, where it was going to go, mm -hmm. she, she loved it, and um, I just added my, more vocals and uh, just collaborated with her on, on the bridge part, mm -hmm. and um, just, yeah, made, made it our own, kind of, you know, but... It, it was, I think it was just one verse and mm -hmm. the chorus, and then right. once she heard it, we just finished it up. So sure. it was awesome. And if I'm not mistaken, it's number three right now in the Billboard charts. Yes, what a man, I'm, I'm hearing better news every day, <laughs> so sure. that's awesome, yeah. And how does that make you feel, though, that you've got to not only be part of that process, but kind of sort of see it climb a bit on the charts? Uh, man, just uh, that God's, God's at work, you know, right. very hard work pays off, you know, eventually, so. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> it's a blessing, yeah. Our show is called Music and Medicine. When you hear those words, when you're hearing about that and prepping for today, what does that mean to you? How does it speak to you? Well, that's, that's the perfect way to put it. Music is medicine, mm -hmm. you know, it's definitely my therapy. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> actually looking for a therapist right now, because <laughs> so, we all have our, you know, traumas, but right. uh, music is definitely something that I've, I've been blessed to be around and it's definitely kept, kept me in uh, kept me in order and uh, in in good you know standing like been able to keep my head on my shoulders because of it so sure everybody has a lot of stress and ups and downs in their life how do you deal with those or how do you uh, sort of work through the times where things are difficult or a song isn't hitting or something isn't really seeming to work so well um, yeah just pray and uh, and get get back on the, the keyboard and <laughs> try to hash out some ideas and get my mind off of the the problem at hand. You know, sometimes you sitting and thinking about it too much will mm -hmm. um, do more damage. So it's best to take a break. You know, sometimes I'll just go try to make some music, and uh, sometimes I, I make a good song. You know, so sure. <laughs> it's, uh, what are some of those things, maybe just two key pieces of advice you might have for somebody who's even younger and, and maybe seven like you or eight or nine, uh, maybe they're three or four and um, sort of wants to break into this business, but, but they may not really realize sort of the, the real truth that lies behind all the glamour. Right. right. What would those be? It would, uh, it would definitely be um, just stay at it. Um, God gave you a talent for a reason mm -hmm. and um, don't let anyone discourage you. Just you never know when your opportunity is going to be, so keep going, and you'll you'll, you'll get to your destination eventually. Yeah. Right. What are you working on now? What can we expect to hear in the near future and see from you? Um, working on uh, a lot of things. My dad's working on. He'll, mm -hmm. he'll throw me some some uh, projects to enhance right. somewhat. Uh, um, also. Working with a rapper from Vic, uh, from Chicago named Vic Spencer. He's okay. a really dope um, rapper. He's been in it for a long time. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a I'm blessed to be able to kind of work on a project with him. That don't know when it's coming out, but just look for it uh, in the future. Yeah. Sure. What are those elements that you feel? Hey, here's how I bring my own little flavor to some of the stuff that I work on with my dad. Um, I would say, you know, I bring. Uh, even though I'm getting a little older myself. <laughs> <laughs> With 27? Getting 20. the gray hairs right now, but I still bring some newness because I keep my, my ear to the, the youth. Um, I have four kids, so mm -hmm. it's, it's awesome being able to see who they like and mm -hmm. hear what they, what they got their ears to. So I um, feel like I'm kind of, I'll always be uh, relevant if I do True. that. <laughs> right. Stay tuned in with the youth, yep. If you had to distill the elements, what are those maybe one or two things that you think, this is what can make a song a hit? Or I don't even think about it. Uh, definitely, you gotta have a strong chorus, mm -hmm. dope melody, uh, something that, that's really relatable. Um, but the hard part is making it your own and mm -hmm. being different, you mm -hmm. know? So 
uh, those are definitely elements to you know great songs so sure. and as we wrap up old new today we see a tremendous amount I think of increasing respect for yeah. those who've come before us and certainly you're yeah. the spitting image of representing that you bring your new flavor and like I said things you may pick up that your kids are listening to and things right. like that but yet you have mad respect for your dad um, what do you think is the the best blend of uh, sort of the old and the new um, it's pretty much uh, you know what my dad's doing with with Nicole's album uh, mm -hmm. he uh, really did a good fusion he got um, some new and old musicians to mm -hmm. uh, enhance certain things and elements of the record and that's what a lot of people are missing today they don't they don't realize that you need that organic and, and uh, true uh, sound um, you know from from real musicians yes. uh, some, sometimes I mean uh, there's different genres that you can um, it's experimental you know mm -hmm. but uh, when it comes to just you know radio, hits or uh, you know true written love songs and ballads and R&B uh, and funk and soul like you got to have those elements and uh, he, he's definitely uh, merging the new with the old and with that so uh, I'll say that th her album is a good good, uh, good example of that yeah do you sense that the music uh, lyrically actually resonates differently with people if we're using tones and things that are synthesized versus, like you said, real musicians and real instruments? Um, that's a good question. Um, you know, with, with the youth today, they're, they're so um, used to the modern sounds and, mm -hmm. and digital snares and kicks mm -hmm. and 808s and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But there's there's artists like you know Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack who yeah. are kind of are blending mm -hmm. the the old with the new that which is awesome because you you know that's who they're looking to for for real music so right. when they go back and uh, show respect to the the genres of music that's it's um just bringing you know hope to the future of music you know we can, yeah. we can all survive together right, right. words to, to live by so yeah no thanks so much for coming out and sharing with us and uh, love your insight your enthusiasm and things of that nature and it's Thank just uh, invigorating that you guys are you know doing so well with this song so we definitely wish you mad success thank you so much definitely yeah. absolutely Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Moshe Lewis. 